So I was browsing Malware Bazaar, as one does, and I noticed some new uploads for some PowerShell malware tagged as info stealer from the Luma family. I thought, hey, you know, PowerShell is human readable. I'm a human. I can read. And I ended up coming across an active malware campaign using the Luma Info Stealer malware. Luma malware is pretty well signatured, you know, it's not cutting edge or brand new. And I've come across it skimming articles, but I've never actually looked deep into it. And I thought, why not? Let's take a first hand look. Let's see what the website is doing. Let's see what this campaign is trying to do and see what we can find. So I've tracked down, drilled down into one active website that's hosting this malware. We're going to focus mostly on their technique for initial access. Luma refers to a fan family of malware and it's most commonly called Luma Stealer because as you guessed it that's usually what it's doing is working as an info stealer type of malware it'll steal the passwords from your browser all your browser data your history think about your credit card autofill data it can steal email credentials sensitive files and also specifically targets cryptocurrency wallets and keys the Luma family of malware operates from a malware as a service model meaning that somebody makes the Luma malware and then they sell it to whoever whoever's got a laptop and some coin. They sell out malware through Telegram and they've got their own dedicated website. And like I said, it's not new. It's been available on Russian speaking forums as early as August, 2022. So obviously it must be working because they're still updating it, selling it, it's still being used in the wild. So I've found the website where they're hosting this malware, but really the first thing they gotta do is get users there in the first place. I don't know specifically exactly how this threat actor is choosing to get people there, but it's really common to see them redirecting users from other websites sites like for free windows or free antivirus free games or of course the classic sending out the link via phishing campaigns any user might visit this website from the link in their email and throughout this video i'm going to be using any run pretty cool site it's great for sandboxing dynamic analysis of urls or files pretty easy to spin up so recommend so any run is going to spin up a virtual machine a sandbox go ahead and go to that link and you can see right away there's something that's already happened. Download.htm was downloaded from the browser. We can go to open this up and boom, there you can see this is kind of their whole scheme, right? It's a fake captcha, kind of like we have to prove I'm not a robot. You got to do the little challenge and you got to do it again because you failed it and you click too many crosswalks or something. So we can take a look at this captcha. Please verify you're not a robot, right? No, I'm not a robot. Verification steps. Press Windows plus R, press Control V and hit enter. So the keen among you may understand what this is trying to do, right? This is pretty, pretty low sophistication. So they got a fake CAPTCHA and they're hoping to trick users into running whatever is on the user's clipboard before we just follow their instructions blindly. Let's take a look at what is actually on the clipboard and boom, there you go. You can see somehow this got copied to our clipboard, PowerShell, EXE, hidden window, command, da 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 da. So what we can do is open their .htm file that it had us download and if we take a look down here here's a script tag which basically copies this hard-coded text when you hit the button it's going to copy this to your clipboard exec command copy so that's what puts it on your clipboard and if we take a look let's just break down real quick what are they actually trying to get us to do so they're trying to get us to run powershell execute this command dash w hidden or a hidden window so the user doesn't see anything so basically what it's doing is pulling uh, a text file with a list of of even more PowerShell commands and it's gonna invoke those commands. So, so what we can do is actually take this command, edit it a little bit and we can take a look at the next step, right? What are they trying to get us to, what are they trying to get us to execute? I'm gonna run the same command that they're trying to get us to run, but, but I'm gonna take off the hidden window and instead of invoking that PowerShell that they want us to run, I'm actually just gonna write it to the screen and boom, there we go. So now we've pulled that text file, but this is ultimately what that CAPTCHA is gonna get you to run in two different stages. So I pulled that PowerShell into VS Code. Let's take a look at what their stager is trying to do. It's pretty obfuscated, but it's not, it's only 55 lines. It's not very long. You can see they got some functions, some variables, a lot of custom functions. They've got a hard-coded link to another endpoint on the same website. And they've also got a hard-coded executable name. They've also got a hard-coded registry location. So all this, very suspicious, right? But there's a lot of obfuscation in this. So I've basically created an easy to read version of this PowerShell that they're trying to get you to run. Again, uh, not the most sophisticated group, I think, because they've got a function in here that they actually don't even need or use. They don't reference it at all. It's probably something left over 
from a past campaign or a past version. I'm sure they're updating this constantly. They've got a variable in here, key, and they've got two functions, encrypt and decrypt. So they generate a random key and they use encryption and decryption inside of this script to obfuscate the file paths, the folder paths, and that's most likely to evade detection, to evade analysis. So make it harder for us to understand what they're doing, make it harder for detection engines, security solutions to understand what it's doing. Next, they've got their hard-coded link to a zip file, which is hosted on that same website. And then down here, they've got four different custom functions for this stager to work. They got one to download a zip payload, one to unzip that payload, and then another one to execute the payload, and lastly, one to create logon persistence. And then again, they just set up some more variables for their script to work, for example, setting the location and the registry, they download the zip payload, and right after that, they sleep for a random amount of milliseconds. And they use this sleep, my guess is to evade defense, evade detection. Uh, some security solutions can be fooled by using long sleeps. After that sleep, they unzip the payload that they just downloaded. Immediately, they delete that zip file, remove the evidence. Right after that, they execute their payload, which is a file called setup.exe from that zip file. And the last thing they do is create logon persistence. So they create a new entry in the registry at that HK current users, current version run because uh, the entries in this folder run when the user logs in, meaning they've executed their payload. Now they give it persistence. So every time the user logs in, it runs again. So really uh, not a whole lot to it, right? They've got the first part where they direct users to their website. Next part is they trick the user into running some malicious PowerShell. That PowerShell is really a stager for more PowerShell. And then as we've seen here, this PowerShell is yet again, another stager to pull down a zip file and execute it and give it persistence. So what I'm to do is hop back in any run we can edit our command and take a look at that zip file that they're trying to pull down and whatever files in there that they're trying to execute so there we go we've got the sep zip that they hard coded in trying to pull and then we've also extracted it and if we take a look at what's in there what is in their zip payload there you go setup.exe this file that they're ultimately trying to execute and give it persistence on the machine and what kind of analyst would we be without throwing that hash in virus total and we can see first submission was like two weeks ago. And we can see it's even tagged as Luma Stealer 18 hours ago. So the last thing we can do is use any run and let's go ahead and just run their full payload. Let's see what would actually eventually happen, you know? And boom, there we go. Okay. So you can see setup.exe was executed. It's got a few different child processes. It's got nc.exe, which is a portable executable. It used the built in Windows binary, ICACLS, to change the permissions of some java folder java file and then it's also got a child process for more.com which is another native windows binary if we take a look this is the java platform se binary it's used to run java and we can also see in the command line this was actually written to a temporary file path on the machine under that app data roaming random name random name nc.exe so and in addition right after that they changed the permissions so everyone has full permissions on this file or folder in the Oracle Java C program data folder. It's very likely that they were also wanting to run another JavaScript file to maybe pull down another payload or execute some more malware that's been seen often with the Luma Stealer malware. Likely it's due to the limitations of my forensic analysis, but if we look at what other people have analyzed, we see pretty much the same thing. A fake capture verification causes PowerShell to go onto the clipboard. User unknowingly executes that command. They download a payload payload execute JavaScript, which leads to that Luma Stealer payload, which gets injected into another process, et cetera, et cetera. Stealing, collecting files, password, wallets, all that. So there you go. There is an interesting tactic that's being used right now for initial access to infect hosts, to infect victim machines, compromise users. So let me know, have you guys seen anything like this? Have you come across this? What should I look at next? And thanks for watching.